All right, hello everybody and welcome to our final session of day two, of the Singularity University uh, virtual summit on COVID-19 and the state and future of pandemics. Uh, I am thrilled to be joined today by Lisa Andrews, um, who is one of our partners in Australia, really doing some amazing work there with her and her team. You've heard from a lot of their faculty today. Um, just can't be grateful enough for having you guys participate in this uh, and helping share really good information. So Lisa's going to be talking about um, pol the polarization of the positives and negatives of pandemics, but most importantly, she's going to be leading you through a workshop um, about what you can do uh, to feel empowered and take action. So I know a lot of you have been craving for that today. So this is the time. If you're coming back and watching this as the replay, do these exercises. Um, it's it's going to be worthwhile. So Lisa um, has a financial data and engineering background um, and is working on the question, how to give everyone a fair start in life and maximize human potential at each stage throughout life. She's dedicated her life to having a positive impact in this world through three main channels. Um, IA Impact, which is removing the friction of financial, human, and community capital um, through Singularity U Australia, educating, empowering, and inspiring leaders to use exponential technologies to solve the world's biggest challenges. The Ignite Alliance, where they're helping aspirational businesses grow. She strongly believes that we live in a time where there isn't a problem we can't, or that we have that can't be solved with technology. She's currently working on projects with organizations such as Singularity, United Nations, ACT AI, ACT AI, sorry, I did get that right. Uh, the Extreme Tech Challenge, uh, EO, and many others, all with a focus on solving the world's greatest challenges using technology. Um, as a future maker and planner, she sees the first step being achievable, being achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the second, creating a vision for the world in the next 100 years, and the third, how can we all have a 10,000 year legacy? I love that. Uh, she's a serial entrepreneur. In 2018, she won the Hunter Outstanding Young Entrepreneur of the Year. There's a founder, part owner, investor in several companies that all focus on profit with a purpose. Uh, if she's not doing all of that, she somehow has time to read, travel to exotic locations, and kite surf. So thank you for joining us today, Lisa. Excited to have you. I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thanks so much. Today, I am here to talk to you about pandemics, uh, how we can polarize the positive and the negative, and how can we relate those to our everyday lives, our businesses and communities in a proactive way. This is my tiger. Uh, our brains have evolved over the past 250 years to think in a local and linear way. Uh, what's going to eat us? Where's our next meal coming from? Am I going to be attacked by a tiger? And more recently, uh, we've been able to have a clear vision of what our six months looks like. Uh, where are we going on holidays? Will I change jobs? Just 200 years ago, I'm not sure we would have been so confident in our six months plans as we have been until recently. We've been hit really hard in Australia. It's interesting to see how everyone around the world can be talking about Australia. In January, you would have heard about our bushfires. Uh, this is my favourite meme. So we had bushfires in February was the floods and March we're calling it the Great Toilet Paper Panic. And uh, in the recent few weeks, I've really observed how people are going back to the scarcity mindset that we once had hundreds of years ago. So how can we step back and adjust our position to see it as it is? In the past, the near and now, life today, six months out. Uh, and next up, we talk about exponentials a lot. So I want to talk about how we can be strategic about the actions that we take and think forward. I chose today to talk about polarization as it's the best tool that I have to see any situation as it is. So if we take a step back, there's going to be positive and negative in everything. So let's take a step back together and see it as it is. If we look at social media, the positive is that we're connected to our loved ones online. And the negative is that there's trolling and online bullying. In home automation, we're looking at convenience automated and you know we can automate our jugs to turn on our lights, but we've also now lost a lot of privacy. 
our autonomous cars, we've got fewer motor accidents, but we also have a lot fewer organs available for transplant. Sometimes it's not always obvious, the positive and negative, but it's always there. And when we look at global self-isolation, a lot of people are talking now about more family time, less pollution. We're also going to have loneliness and an increase in depression. I saw a stat recently that compared the deaths from pollution to the deaths from the COVID-19 virus. And I think it's about three months that it becomes parity. So there's less people dying from pollution than there are uh, from coronavirus. So how does technology play a part in this? In the, in the past, great catastrophes have led to leaps forward in innovation. If we have a look at the Spanish flu, a cornerstone of public health today is epidemiology. The study of patterns, causes, effects in disease, uh, and in response to the Spanish flu, is now received full recognition as a science. Epidemiology requires data, and the gathering of health data became more systematic. In 1919, we saw the opening in Vienna, Austria, of an international bureau for fighting epidemics, a forerunner of today's World Health Organization. World War II saw the development of radar technology, and it's a precursor to systems that are used in today's auto autonomous cars, and the creation of the first computer named Colossus. We looked, we saw the green revolution in the mid 20th century in response to rapidly growing human population and our ability to feed everybody. Combining technologies like synthetic fertilizers, scientific plant breeding hugely increased the world's food output. And Norman Borlaug, the agricultural economist who delivered this approach has been credited with saving more than a billion people from starvation. So in times of great stress, we also experience great opportunity. This is an exponential chart of the total cases of coronavirus outside of China uh, in the top left there. And our exponential chart shows that in a linear world, uh, as we hit the knee of the curve here, we're going to experience disruptive stress and also great opportunity. So if we polarise some of the positives and negatives of this, we're looking at, for healthcare, advancements in collaborative problem solving. There have been people sharing code and sequencing DNA and working on solutions for uh, immunisation to coronavirus, which will take leaps forward. And in the negative time, we've been underprepared and the hospitals are overwhelmed. In manufacturing, how can we actually look at this if we're in business and take advantage of some of these changes? So 3D printing technology, technological advancements are happening significantly uh, whilst we're experiencing supply chain disruption and minimal production. I have a client who's looking at 3D printing at the moment to solve some of their supply chain challenges. Are people going to be thinking more locally? We're actually 3D printing with over 250 different materials at the moment. Is there a way that you can think about that in your business today? In tourism, we are having travel restrictions the majority of tourism is going to completely cease operations. And we don't know if this is going to be a four-week thing, if it's going to be a three-month thing, if it's going to be six months, if it's going to be 12 months. We don't actually know. So if you're in the travel and tourism industry, how can you think about things differently? Can you do virtual tours, shared experiences online? When we're looking at remote work and digitised businesses, we are seeing mass job displacement. And the negative of that, we've also got governments stepping in in the positive and helping provide grants and supporting their people. And we're looking at new, more efficient ways of working. A few examples I have here is one of the Italian hospitals ran out of valves for crucial respiratory machines and local manufacturers stepped in to 3D print replacements. Uh, they were able to do it in a couple of hours and the day after they had 100 valves printed and uh, a 3D printer in the hospital to print them there as well. So they're 
patients that literally would have died without these respiratory devices and technology was able to step in and move forward. Can you imagine the world in the future when we have 3D printers at home that we can print what we need and when we need it or localised 3D printers that are actually supporting our local communities with goods and services without the pollution and the supply chains and the things that we've been doing in the past. There will be disruption post this event and how can we all now step up and look at the opportunities and make the most of them. Have you seen Ready Player One? This might be something that you can do whilst you're at home and think about virtual experiences. Can you create live online experiences? This Summit with Singularity U is a great show of how we can all mobilise really quickly and create experiences online where we can interact online and we can share with each other. So both 3D printing and advancements in technology uh, technologies that we were predicting in the future and now they're happening a lot faster. This Ready Player One picture on the right hand side there you can see the haptic suit with the VR and able to really experience things. Could you actually with tourism take people and help ex them experience your local area? One of the key tools that I refer to is the Gartner hype cycle for emerging technologies. If we have a look at the technologies that we're expecting in the next five to ten years using the Gartner hype cycle, one of the biggest things that stands out to me is that decentralized autonomous organizations were expected in five to ten years. How much do you think that we'll advance in this space in the next 12 months? How many in-person meetings were as critical as we thought? Augmented intelligence might take a big leap forward as well. Do you think we'll have sensors detecting our temperature rather than needing to take it the old fashioned way? Will our mobile phones have technology in them to let us know when it's not safe to be in large gatherings? Something to think about. So let's put some of this thinking into action for personal, for business, and for our communities. I have a question for you. And if you have a pen and paper handy, I invite you to write down a plan on a page for personal business and community as we work through this next section together. So how do we think about the positive and negative in the next four weeks? for short term, for the next six months, our evolved thoughts, and 12 months, our exponential thoughts, where are our crazy ideas? So in the short term, food supplies, staying healthy, washing your hands, sanitizing. Are you going to start at an in-home garden? What do you need to think about if we stay isolated for longer than four weeks? And exponentially, what can you study to gain the mindset and technical capability to have a positive impact on a billion people? That's one of the sayings for me when I first went to Singularity University. I walked in the front door and there was a sign and it said, how will you have a positive impact on a billion people? And I've always wanted to help people. And in that moment, I stood back and I thought, wow, I really need to think about things differently. If I'm going to use technology to scale the way that I have been doing things in the past is not going to carry me into the future. So what happens if we don't get any income for 12 months time? What's your contingency plan? For many of those that are not commuting, on average, we'll have an extra 8% free time in your day. What a return. How can we create good habits and bad habits? Uh, are we exercising? There's positive and negative. When we're cooped up at home, what do we do? Are you getting out and running in the fresh air? Do you have a home gym? What's your diet like? Are you actually eating pasta, frozen foods, 
there's going to be positive and negative in everything. So I invite you to revisit your habits. What do you need to start doing, stop doing and keep doing? There's a great book I'd recommend, Atomic Habits. This is a perfect opportunity for us to stop and reassess and have a look at how we can redo our habits. I love the 80-20 rule is always good. The There is a great TED Talk, and it changed my world about five or six years ago, and it's called Information as Food. So if you search TED and have a look at Information as Food, it talks about how we need to create a diet of information. So if you think about when you're going into um, a buffet, let's say you're at a buffet and there's plenty of food there, every day we are essentially at the buffet of food. How do we not be overweight or how do we maintain our, our physical being? It's typically because we've designed in our own mind what we eat in our own diet. So this TED Talk talks about information as food. So how do we design what we're going to consume and when we're going to consume it? And I thought that was very cool. Now, I've got a little activity for everyone. This is an experiment. We're live online. And I have a Menti Action Cloud. So I invite you to go to www.menti.com and use the code 542614 and answer the question for our word action cloud, what will you do with the extra time that you have at home? And by entering a couple of words in our clouds, you'll also get access to share some ideas with your fellow colleagues and people online watching this summit. So you can log in there and do that at any time after this presentation. And now I'm going to get into the business side of things. So I'd like to invite you to write a quick plan on a page with me for business. We're getting a crash course in why it makes sense to digitise as much of your business as possible at the moment. How can your employees do analogue office-bound work from home? I like to use the balanced scorecard approach. I'm a CFO by trade. So I'll run you through some ideas while you write down some of the actions that you want to take. I'll start with strategy. Bill Tai, a great advisor, friend, mentor of mine, shared with me that business is like surfing. And the analogy he gave that was that you have to paddle out, you need to have the education to be out in the water. When you're out the back, you're typically sitting out the back of the waves and you're bobbing up and down and you're waiting for the right wave. And when you see the right wave, you need to paddle hard. You need the skill to get on the wave. Once you're on the wave, you then need the skill to ride the wave. And you need to know when to get off. And if we think about our businesses in that sense, where are you at the moment in terms of strategy, research and development, your short-term plans, and are you on the right wave? So that's my first question for you for strategy. What do you need to do in the next four weeks? Start doing, stop doing, and keep doing. In six months, the same. And in 12 months, are there some trends that you can take advantage of and make the most of now that we're in this current state of the world? How can you reinvent your business? How can you take your company digital uh, in clients? So the customer part of the balance scorecard, can you keep touch in different ways? Can you map out your new customer journey? It's funny how we liked the human interaction and now business are offering contact free delivery. It's an option when you order things online. Will we see more advancements in robotics and that last mile delivery. Think about what we may be experiencing and the need at the moment. One of my favourite quotes is, we're all in the business of enhancing the human experience. What will humans need? 
for internal business processes? How can we use this time to reinvent how you deliver your products or services in a digital way? As soon as you do, you're on the exponential curve of innovation. And for your teams, how do you actually step up and lead in the best way during these times? I know communication is key. I know it's difficult sometimes when you're used to being face-to-face -face with everyone and then being online. I've been traveling the past year and it's interesting to see how previously my team would wait until I got back and then ask me questions and share things with me. And I had to shift the mindset both myself and with the team of how can we actually treat me like a remote worker when you do travel so much? You're quite often working in airports or hotel rooms or wherever you are. There's different tools that can help you understand your team more. Crystal Knows is one of my favourites. So www.crystalknows.com. And you can go through and it connects to your LinkedIn and it'll use machine learning uh, and language on your LinkedIn to be able to share your personality type, your disk profile, some insights into your personality. I find it great to do with my team to understand each other better. So you might be able to book in a half an hour, an hour workshop of get to know your team better and be able to create these connections whilst you're on uh on leave whilst you're at home and stay in touch. So uh, also uh, the Rockefeller Habits is one of my favourite tools. So creating daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, six monthly, annual habits. Habits are such an important tool and such an important thing, particularly when our entire worlds are shifting and we're all at home and we're doing things differently. How do we maintain our habits and how do we create really healthy habits is going to be important. And then community impact. How do we align with purpose and take this opportunity to step back and think about what we're doing in business and how we can have a bigger impact on the world? How can we align with purpose? The sustainable development goals are a great tool for that. So the 2030 goals one of the things that I invite you to do is have a look on the website for the Sustainable Development Goals. And most people know about the 17 Sustainable Development Goals now, but they don't always know that there's targets in each of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. So if you have a look on the website, there's a tab under each one, and there's eight to 10 typically action uh, targets and indicators on how we're going with the sustainable development goals and what they are. And I invite you to have a look at them in your area. So this is the sustainable development goal number three that I'm sharing and ensuring healthy lives and promote well-being uh, for all at all ages. And one of the sub goals is strengthening the capacity of all countries in particular developing countries, for early warning, risk reduction and management of national and global health risks. Uh, that's one that uh, has been there for a while. And then the indicator as well is the uh, IHR, the Capacity and Health Emergency Preparedness Rating. So that's something that you can have a look at. And if you're in education, have a look at education, have a look at the sub goals, see if you can contribute to some of those. Now, I did miss... The finance part of the balance scorecard, my favourite. Uh, I'm a CFO by trade. And this chart is a Deloitte CFO survey that Ian Stewart, the chief economist of Deloitte, shared last week in their COVID-19 weekly update. And to me, it shows me my natural response as a CFO. So it's a CFO survey. It does relate specifically to the UK. But what you can see on the chart is the polarisation of how CFOs typically react in times of crisis. And my natural CFO hat is defence, defence, uh, reduce costs, focus on cash, risk mitigation plans, business continuity planning. And uh, the polarised view now that I have with Singularity U and an exponential mindset is how do we do both defence and expansionary strategies and plan for both. 
And one of the biggest things that we can do is focus on cash. Uh, and as we go through that plan on a page, if you write down in the next four weeks, six months and 12 months, what is your mitigation plan if things do last longer? Uh, sometimes in times of crisis, I've had clients share with me that um, they wish that they'd cut costs earlier. Uh, it's really hard when there's emotion involved and when it's staff members or team members and your costs are primarily wages and it's difficult. So uh, by taking the emotion out of it, and that's such a horrible thing to say because we all have that natural, we don't want to change anything, we want to keep surviving, uh, I invite you to have a look at that four weeks, six months and 12 months and just make sure that you're conscious about what you're actually doing in the space and uh, communicate with your team, with your suppliers, make sure that you're on the front foot and you're not going to come off too badly uh, in this planning. So the polarization for CFO, here's my expansionary thinking and defensive strategies. So expansionary thinking, how do we digitize our businesses, our workforce, our products, our services? How do we create new products and services that meet the market demand and trends for growth? How do we take the opportunity to reskill and upskill our teams? What about uh, what opportunities are there to think bigger? about solving the world's problems. And then the defensive strategies on the other side, uh, looking after our teams, communication and leadership, what will be the impacts on our liquidity, uh, six months, 12 months, maybe more, uh, where can we save costs and cut non-essential spending, and how do we set risk mitigation and business continuity plans for everything, uh, sure up your supply chain and operations to continue, can you look at your supply chain differently? Okay, I'm going to take a little breath there for our business plan part. Uh, we've had a lot of lessons from history um, in that external shocks are disruptive and they do displace activity, but they tend not to change too much in the long-term economic growth. So governments respond aggressively, uh, they cushion the economic blow, uh, and systems and people tend to be adaptable and resilient. So there is a silver lining Let's step back. Let's make sure that we're approaching this in the right way. Uh, there's a lot of list, There's a lot of uh, different resources available online as well. So Aon has a good one. Um, they've got an event response uh, for the coronavirus. They've got resources and checklists on things to think about with your business continuity planning. And McKenzie's and Deloitte are also producing great thought leadership in planning for Black Swan events and weekly updates and economic updates. So the next part is on community. So what can you give back to your community? Uh, what excess resources do you have that you're willing to give? And then what are some of the things that you may need that you can reach out and ask for help with? There are a group on Facebook at the moment um, that was created in response to the coronavirus. So IntelliHelp was a good one, um, a community where people can express their love of neighbour by simply bringing a needed item while respecting the privacy and social distancing. Uh, it makes no matter who pays. Um, and then the March was, it was created on March 14 and has over 16,000 members as of today. So it's a great definition of community that I heard uh, was that community is a place where you go to give. And I think in times like these, uh, it's how do we look after our neighbours, how do we look after our friends, what do some of the people in our community need and how can we show up for them? One of my friends shared as part of his legacy, the only thing that he really wants is that when he does pass away, is that people remember him as the person who showed up when they needed it the most. So I invite you to share what you have that's excess that you can share with your friends and your family and your local community, people in need, 
in Australia, the bushfires were such a great example of that where everyone showed up. There were great campaigns run, run across Australia and everyone providing support and help. And then also, what do you need? Don't be afraid to ask for what you need. Are there things that you're struggling with that you need to talk about? Are there things that you can ask from people, your friends, your family, your community, or reach out to uh, different, help, different help? We already live in a very digital and connected world. Without the years long rituals of physically moving around our world to do business and being social with each other, we now have to create new habits and this requires effort. There's gonna be loneliness. Uh, we need to have some routines to check in with people as well as uh, using Teams for Zoom. I also use it for coffee catch ups. And as I've been traveling for most of last year, I also started to have Friday afternoon catch ups, uh, Sunday brunches, uh, with my friends, uh, bring your own cucumber sandwiches, uh, or not quite. And uh, I'm sure if you're like me, you'll create a habit to schedule it in. Every year I have a word of the year and it's to be my guiding principle for what I feel um, that I need to focus on and explore for the year. So I'll choose a word and then I'll explore it in all sorts of different ways. Uh, typically I do it in the last week of December. So come 1st of January, it's not a resolution. It's just something that I'm going to live by for the year. In 2015, it was proximity. So who do I need to be around? Um, you become the average sum of your five closest people and uh, proximity was the word. In 2016, it was outstanding. And I was focusing on not being a perfectionist. So just aiming to be outstanding. And this year, the word of the year was smarter. And how can I do things differently? Uh, to remember, I set my passwords to be a variant of the word. So I type it uh, whenever I log into my laptop uh, or sites online, it's a variation of the word, but I'm reminding myself constantly of it every day. And I feel that the universe has sent us all a message to stay home, to be grounded, to have a good think about our actions and think about how we can all collectively be smarter. If not now, when? And I invite you now for your planning, uh, if you were to choose just one word for the year uh, to guide you through the rest of the year, what would it be? Feel free to share it in the chat if you'd like to share it with some of your colleagues and fellow people online at the moment. Um, if there was one word, what is it? Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to invite Adam back in to filter any questions. Uh, I also have um, some ways to connect with me as well. So you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I run uh, custom programs for large organizations and live online programs. You can reach out to me for a custom program at uh, hello at lisaandrews.global. And you can see some of the upcoming programs on Eventbrite which is singularityaustralia.eventbrite.com. And I've got workshops specifically for business continuation plans for technologies of the future, some more depth into what's coming in the near future as well as in the next 20 years. It's one of the things I love about uh, exponential technology and the mathematical formula behind it is technology typically doubles every two years so we can predict some of these things in the future. And that's me. Over to you, Adam. Thank you, Lisa. Well, I think I think that the uh, what you did there at the end by asking people to share their word, uh, maybe we should have done it a little bit sooner with, sooner with some of the other prompts. You're getting a really great response. Not sure if you can see this, um, but we've got words like spark, love, challenge, generosity, sharing, resilience, playful, accountability, unlearn, change, dream, laugh, uh, ambition, gratitude. So many, so many good ones in here. Uh, you really, really got them going. That is awesome news. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right, let me take this one down a notch. Um, I think since yours was more of a workshop, we didn't get too many questions that came in, although maybe people will add them now. Um, 
Yeah, it'd be great to hear from people of some of the things that they're taking action in their business in the next four weeks or some of the technologies that they're excited about. So things like 3D printing, like AR, VR, nanotechnology, bionics, uh, robotics, there's going to be huge advancements. What are people excited about? Uh, while those come in, I'll ask you a question uh, that that came up. What are some of the positive things that you think will come out of this uh, pandemic and, and global health crisis? I think, uh, and this is purely my uh, opinion, I enjoy that the world is actually taking a breath. So the reduction in pollution is one of the biggest thing on climate change. And if you think about the analogy of feather brick truck, if anyone's heard of that, is um, typically the universe will send you feathers that you need to pay attention to. So if you relate it to your health, you might get a feather, you might get a little bit run down, you'll get a head cold. And if you don't listen and rest, uh, typically a brick will come along and you might end up in hospital, you might have something a little bit more long, you might get stressed, you might have something that just immobilizes you for a little while. And then if you don't listen to those signs, then you get the semi-trailer, you get the truck. And the truck will come along and you'll be, uh, you'll have something serious like cancer. Uh, and if we have a look at the feather brick truck in health, it's quite easy to see, listen to the signs. If you think about it with climate change, I feel like we've had the feathers for a very long time. There's been quite a few bricks. Uh, the wildfires in Australia in January, or over this fire season, it was really October through to January was a pretty heavy truck to say, hey, there's stuff going on. And um, if anything that we could have all collectively done together would be to stop flying, stop manufacturing, stop driving our cars on the road, everyone stay home. Uh, and that's kind of one of the positives, seeing the silver lining in everything. Um, and I know that the world is human and we are gonna be disrupted. That's the negative. And I feel like that's the biggest positive for me. I, I so appreciate that perspective. It's, a, it's definitely a good one. Um, my wife and I have been talking a lot about similar thoughts and ideas um, as well. Looks like we've got lots of questions that were kind of in that similar vein. Let me see if I can pick out some other ones. Um, and if I pick out one there, so um, a business plan for exponential growth. Uh, I know we do do a, exponential uh, business growth plans for me, it's about knowing the technologies that are coming. So with my CFO hat on, we look at where are you now? Where do you want to be? And then what's the gap analysis? And a lot of business plans have traditionally been one year, two years, five years thinking about that. I think with tools such as the Gartner Hype Cycle, with um, Singularity U and the the methodology that we use around exponential technology to have a look at what's coming in the future. We're able to incorporate that into our business plans. And so how do we do that gap analysis on the next 10 years? One of the things I'm most excited about is that at the moment we've got 50 billion devices and a trillion sensors. And in the next 10 years time, we're gonna have 500 billion devices and 100 trillion sensors. And so I'm calling it this future of perfect knowledge and what do we need to know? If you think about um, it, it, trees, for an example, we used to have 7 trillion trees on the planet and now we have about 3 trillion trees. And the global estimate was updated in 2015 from 400 billion, which is the 3 trillion rounding error. So we actually haven't stood back to see it as it is We've been so grateful for social media and how connected we've been, but we haven't thought about this future of perfect knowledge, these technologies that are coming. Are you in the market of data? Do you produce sensors? What can we measure? What, do the world, what does the world need to know? Um, how many kangaroos are there in Australia? I don't know, that's a fun one. Uh, koalas, it's a little bit more sad at the moment, but I'd love to know so we can track that in real time. There's things like that that will be able to be incorporated into your business plan. 
all kinds of big ideas. And I expect that some of the events that you shared um, on your Eventbrite coming up, we'll, we'll be tackling some of these questions um, and exploring uh, some of the topics. Definitely. Fantastic. Uh, any parting thoughts you want to leave the, the group with? Absolutely. I've seen that someone has just put in the chat there that they've just read Peter Diamandis' new book, uh, The Future is Faster Than You Think. It is absolutely one of the best resources that you can have and to be at home and reading right now and thinking about the technologies that are coming in the future and how they can impact every industry in the next 10 years. Right on. Well, thank you for uh, for joining us all the way from Australia. Um, we wish you the best with the challenge that you're all facing this month. Hopefully the trend does not continue, um, but definitely look forward to the rest of your programming with Singular to You Australia. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me. All right. See you, Lisa. Yeah. All right. Everybody, that brings us to the close of day two. So we've got one more day left tomorrow. Um, we will have some COVID-19 stuff, obviously, um, but we'll also be talking about future of work, remote work, virtual teams, um, some other business impacts and implications as well. So tomorrow should be a great day. Um, as always, tune in live, watch the replays. They're always going to be around. Um, we'll be sharing those links here shortly. So I'll do a quick recap just to, to end us today. Um, we started off with Onisia Liao coming to us talking about traditional versus participatory surveillance systems, specifically around what we can learn from uh, monitoring the spread of disease and sickness at things like the World Cup, at the Olympics, um, and just how valuable when um, we as you know, every everyday normal people can participate by sharing our data. Um, it gives us all access to bigger pools that can help reduce the spread of disease. Um, he also encouraged everybody, this isn't about going and making the next app to collect this data. We don't need an uh, app epidemic, as he said. So um, go and find something that's local in your area. Start sharing um, information if you're feeling um, unhealthy or unwell. It could help all of us. Uh, Mariana Dahan came to us next talking about closing the identity gap um, and just how important it can be uh, having a digital identity so that we can track, uh, not just for tracking sake, but to help and support the people that might not have access to uh, healthcare, uh, but also how this information can uh, help all of us. Meanwhile, we need to be very careful with how we use this data so we don't use it to um, exploit or endanger people that might already be um, there. Sarah came to us next. Uh, from Italy and talking about the importance of food. I think that was a lively group and bunch for everybody. Um, I love her call to action just to connect and rethink the system right now. Uh, while we're at home, we have our kitchens, we've got to be cooking for ourselves, reconnect with food, then really think about what that means for us moving forwards, um, considering the trend is projecting that we will all be living in large cities here in a short period of time. We talked to Sunny. Next, uh, join us from Canada talking about virtual healthcare and how it's already here. It is ubiquitous and it might be the best way um, to be treating and diagnosing uh, what we have right now. So check it out. See if there's any virtual care options uh, near you. It might be a good way as opposed to going into a congested office or anything like that. Uh, Sabine came to us next um, and talked to, talked to us about all kinds of things, um, but we talked about food and exercise. Uh, and the importance of taking care of our bodies in order to create resilience. We also got into how we democratize healthcare data um, and how we might use some of that information to help keep us healthy and more resilient. We got into a fascinating discussion with Alex um, about authoritarian governments and the role that um, governments and their setups can play either in helping or hindering uh, the spread of a pandemic like this. Uh, his short answer to all of you was to be very aware um, of the government's coming in right now and using it as a, an opportunity to, to take away our uh, rights and liberties. So definitely pay attention to that. Sometimes they don't tend to come back, um, but also the importance for us to come together right now uh, and fact check everything that we're consuming um, in times when it's spreading very, very quickly. I think James Ehrlich inspired all of you next uh, with the eco villages uh, that he's been working on. I know for one, I can't wait to live in a place like that and have you know, all the things that I have today, plus a great connection to, to nature and sustainability um, with the community around us. So take a second to visit Regen Villages and think about what that could look like for you. 
Uh, Jamie switched gears on us. Uh, he was going to talk about genetics, but thought everybody else did such a great job. And so he came to us, I think really with a great, just talk on how he's thinking about this moment in time right now. Um, and that this isn't really a 2001 moment referring to 9-11. Uh, it's something much bigger. Think of it as a 1941 moment, I believe is what he said. Um, but this is the new normal. We're going to continue to see this disruption um, and, uh, and, and global challenges like this pop up. So this is the time for us to come together uh, and rethink things and maybe do it differently. Uh, we w then went to Bradley. Uh, it shows an adorable puppy who is hoarding um, some paper or some uh, toilet paper, excuse me. Um, but really that our leaders need to care about pandemics and we need to care about them too. Um, it's, this might not be, it's definitely not going to be the last one and we all need to feel empowered to do something about it. Um, it was also interesting. They talked about how AI really isn't yet being used for this pandemic, but it can be, um, moving forward. So we need to make those investments, um, at the international, national, and local levels. And then, of course, we just had time with Lisa, um, who walked us through some practical ways that we could take a step back when we're here at home, when we have time um, to really think about the positives and negatives, what we should start and what we should stop um, related to COVID-19. So let's use our time wisely. Um, you can watch her replay. This will be part of that session, obviously, too, um, and really think about the polarization that exists um, in in our lives right now and build that plan for yourself, for your business and for your community. So you can feel a little bit more sane. So that was our content for today. Um, rapid fire. You can go back and watch the replays whenever you feel like it. Um, as a reminder, my name is Adam Hoffman. I'm the vice president of global brand and community here at Singularity University. For those of you that are new to Singularity, um, we are a global organization. Um, that really connects people around the idea that we can take these exponential technologies and use them to solve really big problems. But we aim to convene leaders like yourself. If you're here, yes, you're a leader um, to come together either as individuals or uh, through your organization uh, to really wrestle with these challenges, explore this content, come up with your own perspective, um, get connected with one another and then go and take massive action in the world. So if we can be of any service to you, um, like I said, we're, we'll be running programs both in person eventually again um, and online. We've got a ton of great content. Visit su.org um, to come and see us. Um, we've got tons of stuff on there for you. I'll share some final resources here that I think the team has already posted, but just in case they haven't, uh, you can join our Facebook group. Um, to keep the conversation going. Uh, if you aren't able to attend live or just want to meet more people, uh, share ideas on our Be Innovative uh, challenges. We're ideating around six uh, key themes we're trying to build um, solutions for. YouTube playlist has the videos from yesterday. All of today's videos will be up tomorrow, but right now you can watch them in Crowdcast. And then, of course, the slides, uh, links that have been shared, other helpful resources are all on su.org slash COVID-19. Uh, just scroll down to the bottom. We've been at the team has been adding content there all day, and I got to give them a huge shout out. Um, everybody behind the scenes working hard to make this happen. So thank you for that team. And then, of course, if you want to dive deeper, go beyond COVID nineteen and really think about the implications for you and your business um, or your organization. Come and join uh, EXO X Prize and Singularity University um, here in a couple weeks. We've got a special sign up page: exoworld.live slash SU, and we will get you uh, registered, signed up, and participating in another great event with our global experts and our global um, community. All right. So that takes us to some final thoughts for today. Um, just share some of my takeaways. We have to participate and take action. That's where things are at right now. Um, and so for some of us, that might mean social distancing and quarantine, just what we can do on our own. Um, it might mean taking care of our both mental and physical selves. And it could mean taking on an entirely new initiative or contributing to someone else's. There have been so many great things that have been shared. Um, if you feel inspired, start something new. Let us know how we can help. Uh, but in any case, do not do not be a bystander. Um, it's our responsibility to, to do something in this moment of tremendous opportunity. 
Also, we're going to be feeling a lot of panic and fear um, these next coming weeks and possibly even months. And when that happens, it's important that you reground yourself. Uh, our linear brain, or our animal brain, however you want to think about it, it's running wild. Um, you know, we think that we can't solve these problems uh, and we can't get these things figured out. But if you just take a second to ground yourself, uh, we can definitely do it. The next piece is during these times of change, let's take our privacy and data seriously. Uh, we need to be able to share stuff so that we can uh, help find solutions. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we don't give up too much um, of our information where we feel like we've lost our freedoms. Um, and last but certainly not least, this is an incredible opportunity to reinvent uh, and redesign the path that we're on um, as humanity. And you know, really look forward to doing that together with the right principles, ethics, diversity, and intention uh, based on the way the world is today and the way that we'd like it to be in the future. So I can't wait for more content tomorrow. Excited to have y'all around um, again. Uh, it's been fun hosting. I wish that I had a better way of interacting with y'all, um, but have a good night, good afternoon, good morning, whatever it is for you. And we'll see you again here in, I don't know, 12, 14 hours. Talk to you soon.